Good evening, everyone, and Merry Christmas Eve. Welcome to the Buff Christmas Eve service 2020. Melanie Reek and I, Kevin Allen Schmid, will be leading some beloved carols, eight of them, in fact. And if you'd like to read the music, please grab your gray and teal hymnals, or the words will be there on the screen for you to read along with, starting with Joy to the World. <coughs> Thank you for singing along. I think if you are willing and able, it's nice to stand up and let your voices ring out. But be careful because these are Unitarian versions of the hymns, so you may have noticed the words might be different than the way that we sang them as kids. Now we're going to hymn 259 in the Gray Hymn Book, <clears throat> We Three Kings. Love forever ceasing there. 
And now we are doing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Um, and we're doing a version which is on your screen because it's not in our hymn book. <clears throat> Little Town of Bethlehem, which in our hymnal is number 246. a song not in our hymnal which was one of my favorites when I was a child away in a manger Midnight Clear, number 244, we'll sing two verses. Their heart. 
235. Hey, thank you, Melanie. We go to 239, Go Tell It on the Mountain, 239.
Good evening, and welcome to Bellingham Unitarian Fellowship. I'm Reverend Paul Beckel. Please welcome with me too, Reverend Barbara Ten Hove, who will be offering us inspiration later in the service. Well, good evening, everyone. It's so great to be with you again on Christmas Eve. I'm really grateful to Paul and Kevin and everyone who has done such yeoman service to create a service for us tonight, a beautiful Christmas Eve service. How I wish we could be together in person, but until we are, it's great to see you in this way. Merry Christmas. If we listen together tonight, we hear tidings of gladness and tidings of sadness, fatigue, anxiety, and wondrous love. I feel very privileged to be able to spend this hour with you when so much of our lives has been dislocated. And when so many of those with whom we'd like to be spending tonight are far apart or departed. So we sing tonight through all these swirls of emotion, tides of grief and aspirations of, of sending our love to one another here and beyond and beyond. And we light candles tonight that we can peer through the darkness, see far enough to trust and let Christmas come. way we are going to do for So the Children Come, number 1061 in our Teal book, we will sing this chorus and then Paul will do a narration. We'll come back and sing the chorus. He will have another verse and then we will conclude with, with For So the Children Come. For so the children come, each night born into a world of uncertainty, mystery. Their lives still to become the life of humanity for all the days ahead and nights without number, the children come. Each night a child is Child is born. 
For so the children come, as they have come for eons. The children come, each a mystery of their own. Any, of one, any one of them could be our protector, our healer. Any one of them in the days to come, in the days beyond our seeing, could turn to love beyond all reason, could turn to love beyond their hurt, could return to the mystery when they go, return with joy. Each night a child is We have three Buff families lighting their chalices with me tonight. They'll introduce themselves now and tell us what makes their spirits bright. What makes my spirit bright is wrapping presents and giving up the people. And me, um, my spirit bright is making a cookies with sister me, my mom, my dad. What makes my spirit bright is cuddling with a warm kitty on a cold night. And what makes my spirit bright is getting to open my advent calendar every single day. And this is what I got today in my advent calendar. Please join me in lighting your chalice now. Let's let's hear what makes Eloise Reynolds' spirit bright. What makes my spirit bright is being festive with my friends and family. Thank you. I'm so glad you could be with us tonight. And let's say together our covenant. Love is the spirit of this fellowship, and service gives it life celebrating our diversity and joined by a quest for truth we work for peace and honor all creation this is our covenant please join me now in a spirit of prayer and meditation if you wish you might begin by closing your eyes and entering into the darkness Join together your hearts. Feel our collective presence as spread out as we may be, still one. Invoking the Great Spirit. Great Spirit beyond all of the things that we can own. We come tonight to be reminded of the transcendent mystery that emerges again and again within the darkness. We come tonight to lay down our expectations, to let go of our bitterness, to invite grace and peace into our hearts. May our hopes tonight be for goodwill, that goodwill may reign in our hearts tonight and every night 
that a child is born. That was a group of Buff members and friends, Laura Shelton, Leslie Rigg, and Beth Fuller, who together are known as Trillium. And now a reading from the Gospel of Luke, King James Version. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one, into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let's turn to 237 in our, t in our gray hymnals, the first Noel, 237. Many years during our Christmas Eve service, we have taken a collection to support the work of the Interfaith Coalition. Why? Here is Sarah's story. Though her name has been changed, this is a true story of someone that the Buff Family Promise Team met in their work to support the larger network of organizations joined to fight homelessness here in Bellingham. My name is Sarah and I have an amazing 10-year-old daughter. At 15 years old, I got pregnant and got kicked out of the house. We had been homeless for two years when we were accepted into Family Promise. 2020 has been a hard year for almost everybody, including us, but it's also been probably the best year 
for us in the sense that we finally got the guidance we needed and finally are able to have a home and a vehicle donated by a volunteer. There's so much more I wanna be able to accomplish and I can't wait to see what the future has for me and my daughter, especially now that I'm able to not stress about where we are going to sleep every night or what we're going to eat or how we're going to get appointments, get to appointments or my job. I don't know if we would have been able to make it if this program wasn't available to us. The Interfaith Coalition is a collaboration of 50 congregations, diverse faith groups, plus other local partners. We are 1,400 volunteers strong. At Buff, we are 30 volunteers strong. Together, we're able to provide housing to, and support for families experience, home, experiencing homelessness, meals four nights a week, warm coats, children's books, and urgent need response and more. This year through Family Promise, we provided temporary housing and support services to 36 families. Since the onset of the pandemic, we have been advised to stay apart, to keep our distance. That goes against our very real need for connection. But in trust of the ongoing spirit of togetherness, we ask you to make a donation tonight to be a partner in empowering local families to get out of poverty. Buff will bundle all that we receive tonight or in the coming days for the Interfaith Coalition. You can donate in three ways. If you go to buff.org and go to the upper right-hand corner of our homepage, you'll see a donate button. If you wanna use your phone, you can use the Give Plus app. And if you want to mail a check to our uh, mailing address, 1207 uh, Ellsworth, which of course you can also find at buff.org. And all the checks should be made out to Buff. If you do it electronically, there will be a way to indicate uh, that this is a special collection that you're giving to. Thank you so much for your generosity. Know what a great difference that it makes. And now let's sing. Actually, uh, we're not going to sing. This is Whoops. Angels We Have Heard on High as Offertory. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs>
Well, hello again, everyone. It's so good to be here tonight to be a part of this wonderful service. Thank you, Melanie, for your beautiful music and to Paul for sharing such a powerful story. My friend and colleague, the Reverend Lynn Unger has written a wonderful poem that emerged from her reading of Luke's nativity story, which Paul read just a few minutes ago. And I'm truly grateful for her permission to share it with us tonight. It's called Annunciation to the Shepherds. It's hard not to laugh. What a picture it makes. The dumbfounded shepherds and the stricken sheep, the cacophony of bleating and the barking of sheepdogs dashing and nipping in a vain attempt at order. And over it all, the angels trying to make their shimmery voices heard. A, a who? Wrapped in what? The shepherds holler back, where are we supposed to go? Poor guys, they wanted directions, a purpose, some sense of how the story might end. And all they got, all any of us ever get, was the sound of angels somewhere beyond the din, singing glory, Hosanna, across the improbable night. Well, it's true, it must have been very disconcerting. There you are, doing your job as you've done it for most of your life. You're good at it, like your parents were before you. You have learned about herding and work well with the dogs who nip at the sheep to keep them moving. You know where the best feeding grounds are and the different paths to walk there with a bunch of ornery sheep. You can even tell when a pregnant ewe is in trouble and are able to help her so neither she nor the lamb die in the cold night air. You're glad you're good at your job. You even like it, though at times the sheep stink and the road to the fields is hard and rocky. But then something dreadful happens. One night as you were herding the sheep with your shepherd co-workers, a bright star appears. You hear loud voices and looking up into the familiar sky, you see something completely unfamiliar, an angel. Now in our time, angels have mostly been tamed and they hang on our Christmas tree with little gold halos and tiny gossamer wings. But angels in the time of our shepherds weren't so small and dainty, and the Christmas story gives us angels on a grand scale. As the gospel writer Luke tells it, an angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. This angel was no little cherub. This was a big presence filling the sky with glory. But it doesn't end there. For after bringing the news of this miraculous birth to the shepherds and telling them how they will know if they find the child, the story continues. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. A multitude. Lots and lots of angels hollering at these shepherds. What were they saying? Well, in the words of a familiar Christmas carol we sang earlier, they were saying, hark. Hark is not a word we use much anymore, but it's worth a look. Actually, it would be more correct to say it's worth a listen, for that's what it means. Listen, pay attention closely to what I have to say. For our poor shepherds out doing their job, an angel saying, hark, was pretty scary. <laughs> Remember, they were sore afraid. But don't you think it was a little exciting as well? It was surely a break from routine, but it was bound to have been confusing for everybody. I love Lynn Unger's take on this scene in Luke. The shepherds are clearly confused. A who? Wrapped in what? Where are we supposed to go? 
<laughs> I think if I were confronted by an angel hollering, hark, I might be confused too, and maybe a bit scared. For whenever we are confronted by something that is asking us to pay attention, change direction, do something totally different than we ever have before, even just listen, truly and completely listen, it is tempting to just go back to our familiar routines and pretend we didn't hear. But in the Christmas story, at least some of the shepherds decided to follow, they decided to follow the star and go into the unknown. They looked up and they wondered and they listened to what the angels were saying. Hark, go somewhere you have never been before and see what you will find there. Now, most of us, I would imagine, have never had an encounter like that described in the Gospel of Luke. It's a rare thing today for a multitude of the heavenly host to appear to anyone. And yes, I know this story contains far more legend than fact. Yet I wonder if there aren't times, even in our quite ordinary lives, when something, who knows what, but maybe some kind of an angel, hollers out to us, hark, listen up. Something new, maybe even wonderful, could be waiting just around the corner. Don't you want to start on the path to see what it might be? During these strange pandemic times, we've been asked to stay home as much as possible and not take any drastic risks. Wisely, we're doing what we can to mitigate risk, keeping each other as safe as possible. And we're also being bombarded with information that may make us sore afraid. Fear is all around us, and at times it can be deeply unsettling. I've wondered occasionally during these last few months if the fear of what might happen in our health or our politics or our world might be just as toxic as the virus. In the midst of such fear, however, I've been beautifully astonished to encounter incredible courage from so many people even with a pandemic raging, maybe even because of it, it seems to me that many folks are finding a way to move with grace through these times, listening to the world's needs and answering with energy and commitment. I think of people like the retired nurses and doctors who are coming back to work to help beleaguered hospitals. I honor the school teachers and education professionals who are finding ways to creatively teach adults and children online. I am in awe of the hardworking farmers and grocery store clerks who make sure we're all able to eat well. I am deeply grateful to the librarians and bookstore owners and the writers they support who are assuring that we have literature to keep our minds occupied. I'm encouraged by the many artists, musicians and actors who are finding ways to paint and sing and act in new ways. And I am in awe of the many people who have, since the election, done the hard work to make sure our democracy survives. I applaud these folks and so many others for whom the call to change and take risks is powerful. And I recognize that many of us hear the angels speaking to us a bit more subtly but it still touches me deeply how helpful and kind and supportive so many people are being during this time of great stress. From picking up groceries for a neighbor, to donating to the local food bank, to setting up a family Zoom call, to writing letters to Congress, people just like you, maybe even you, are building a better world by taking an appropriate risk to share your gifts with others. And I would be remiss if I didn't note how grateful I am to the many people in this congregation and Unitarian Universalist congregations across the globe who are living out our principles in creative and kind ways during this difficult time. If you haven't done so already, I urge you to take a moment to personally thank the amazing and hardworking staff and lay leaders who have kept this church afloat 
during this incredibly challenging time. What do all these folks have in common? They paid attention to that voice in their heart that said, hark. Then they understood. As one person I read about just this week said, we need to be human, to lead from the heart and prioritize love and joy and humanity, especially now. As the shepherds knew, even if you are sore afraid, taking a step towards helping another is worth it. During this holiday season, when so much of what we are accustomed to has been disrupted, taking a moment to listen attentively can be deeply significant. What are the angels of your heart telling you? Perhaps, if like the shepherds, we all learn to listen to the better angels of our hearts and to hear the voices that speak of peace on earth and goodwill to all, then the world we seek would become the world we actually create. You don't have to believe in the factual truth of the story of Jesus's birth to glimpse the power and wonder in the good tidings of great joy of which the angels sing. They challenge us to listen attentively to this simple story to see what it might teach us. A child who brings hope, parents who love each other and their baby, strangers who offer kindness, animals who bring warmth and laughter, wise ones who have hope for the future, shepherds who leave their routines to take a risk on the unknown, and angels Blessed voices raised in song who offer everyone who will listen the opportunity to believe in the possibility of peace on earth, goodwill to all people. Each Christmas, we remember again the deeper meanings of this ancient story. And yet ultimately, it remains a mystery, surrounded more in legend than in fact. As Lynn Unger writes, the shepherds, and perhaps all of us want directions, a purpose, some sense of how the story might end. And all they got, all any of us ever get, was the sound of angels somewhere beyond the din singing <clears throat> glory, Hosanna, across the improbable night. Particularly during this incredibly difficult time, when it seems as if we'll never know how the story might end. It is wise to stay open to mystery and have a little trust in what's on the way. So on this improbable night, may we have faith and hope and trust enough to listen when the angels say to us, hark, and may the paths we follow take us on a road of kindness love, and justice, so that someday peace on earth will no longer be just a legend sung of by angels, but truth lived here and now among us. Amen and blessed be. We are going to sing There's a Star in the East, which is number 255. Thank you. 
It is Christmas, hallelujah, a season of joy and love. But it is also the darkest time of the year. And it is in the dark time that we celebrate light, even as we remember the darkness. There are times when the darkness can be frightening, when the shadows of hate and evil spread across the land. In these times, we light candles of hope to remind ourselves that love exists, that hope does indeed abide. And there are times when the darkness is comforting, when it hides our tears or gives us quiet moments of rest. In these times, we light candles to help us see the dark just a little bit better like the stars at night, allow us to see the darkness glimmer. On Christmas Eve, we remember the dark, the darkness of winter, of animal stable, of the womb. On Christmas Eve, we remember the light, the flicker of a star, the flame of new birth, the light of hope, Come to our world. So tonight, let us enter the darkness for a moment. When we extinguish our lights here, please do so wherever you are. Join us as we feel the darkness around us and listen to its music. All who give freely of themselves, all who understand that for people into the darkness, we, we bring, bring our, our light. light. We light this candle for peace. May it shine for all who understand that for peace to come, we must work for justice. Into the darkness, we, we bring, bring our, our light. light. We light this candle for love. May it shine for all who give freely of themselves to others, caring and sharing from their hearts. Into the darkness, we bring our light. We light this candle for hope. May it shine for all who have faith that we truly can build a better world for all people everywhere. And from this circle of light, we will kindle a few more candles to represent all of you at home who are lighting them as well. As these candles are lit on this dark and beautiful night, please light your own candles and join with us as we recall the ancient story of Jesus's birth by singing that most beautiful of all carols, Silent Night. We will sing it once, then we will hum, and then we will sing the first verse again. Let us together from near and far create the magic that is Christmas Eve.
May these candles of joy, peace, love, and hope bless us on this Christmas Eve. May their small lights and all the lights that we have lit together tonight blaze in our hearts, challenging us to live the Christmas message of peace on earth, good will to all. Thank you for joining us on, that, on this magical night. May you have a wonderful Christmas and may 2021 bring healing, happiness, and hope to each of you, our nation, and our world. Merry Christmas and good night.
we prepare now to extinguish, his, extinguish our chalices together. But know that if you'd like to stay, we'll have coffee and cookies uh, afterward on breakout rooms. But first, a benediction. Each night a child is born is a holy night, a night to reflect upon the star that shines before us, calling us through the darkness, step by step, hope by hope, heart by heart. Barbara and Ron, have you not been invited to a room? <laughs> 